Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Christina Kent, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm an oil painter based out of San Francisco. Today, we're going to be painting a self-portrait. Let's get to it. Okay, so let's get started. So I haven't done a self-portrait in a while, but I think they're a really good challenge and also a fun practice, so I thought I would do one today. And I used to be really intimidated by the prospect of painting self-portraits. I think this is common for a lot of artists, but it was definitely common for me. The thought of staring at my face for a long time and trying to paint my features and trying to depict what I looked like was really, really intimidating. At the same time, I think self-portraits play an important role in art history, and so many painters have done self-portraits that makes it seem to me like this important artistic tradition. Even so, I avoided it for a long time, and although I loved portrait painting, and some of my favorite artists had done stunning self-portraits, I instead would either paint people that I knew or paint from models whose faces I didn't recognize, finding it a lot easier to make paintings based on others' faces rather than my own. And so I was avoiding self-portraits for a long time. I would occasionally do self-portraits, but it definitely wasn't a practice of mine until a friend of mine on Instagram reached out and asked if I wanted to start a portrait painting challenge with her. And on Instagram, there are a lot of art challenges on various topics, but we weren't aware of any that focused on portraits and building painters' skills at portrait painting. So we thought it would be fun to start one. And we decided to make it a self-portrait challenge, mostly so that I could conquer my fear of self-portrait painting once and for all, but also because it's convenient to paint self-portraits. You don't need to go out to search for a model. Instead, you have yourself right there whenever you want to paint, and so that makes it really accessible. We set out to paint one self-portrait every week, which was a huge change for me, given I would do maybe one self-portrait a year, probably less than that, prior to the challenge. But what happened was pretty amazing. I found that I quickly got over my fear of painting myself or any of the awkwardness I had felt around examining my own features and putting so much focus into the way I looked, and I began to start to just see myself as this subject, as something that could be painted. I was able to look at myself and my features in a much more neutral, non-judgmental way. Also, something else that I had been concerned about from the start of the challenge was that I would get bored painting myself every week. After all, the way that I looked didn't really change much from week to week, so it seemed like I would quickly get tired of the challenge. But instead I found that it was a great way to actually boost my innovation and creativity in my painting. Because my face wasn't changing very much from week to week, I instead sought to change the lighting condition, the colors, the composition of the painting to keep it interesting. And I think the result was that I ended up exploring a lot more ideas and compositions and colors in the paintings than I would have had I been painting portraits of a variety of people. Now, when I want to paint a portrait, I don't hesitate to use myself as a model, and I am really happy that I have gotten over this fear and can use myself as a model because I feel so much more connected to these pieces when they're done. As I paint these self-portraits, I can't help but reflect on my own sense of identity. I think about what it feels like to be me and my experience in the world. At the same time, as I paint these portraits, I think about how we're all constantly changing, how each image of myself is an image of me at a specific moment in time. We can never return to these moments, and it makes them extremely precious. Almost like I'm painting the memory of myself. And that's another fascinating element to self-portraits. I think the self is something that we feel so intimate with. How could we know anyone as well as we know ourselves? And yet, the self is also so elusive. I mean, think about it. We are the only people who we will never actually see directly. We can never actually see ourselves. We can only see reflections or photographs of ourselves. 
I think it's these ideas that keep bringing me back to self-portrait painting and keep me interested and excited in painting self-portraits. And this portrait in particular is kind of going back to more traditional portrait painting roots. While I was doing the self-portrait challenge, over time my portraits were becoming a lot more experimental and playful, but because it had been some time since I'd done a self-portrait, for this one I wanted to go back to a more traditional portrait using naturalistic colors. So I decided to use a limited palette of neutral colors, terra rosa, raw umber, yellow ochre, and titanium white. It's a beautiful palette for natural looking portraits and it has just these very warm tones to it. Why I gravitated towards this palette, I'm not entirely sure. I know part of it was because I like limited palettes and I like how they simplify the painting process. And I also had used this palette before on a portrait and really enjoyed how the colors worked together and I wanted to explore that. But I also think that the peaceful expression on my face in this portrait lent itself well to these more subdued neutral colors. And as I was working on this portrait, I was really focused on thinking what details were the most essential and what could be left out. I really liked the way the highlight was creating a sort of triangular form that was first highlighting my eye and a broad highlight on my cheek that narrowed down as it hit my upper lip and lower lip and chin. So I made sure to refine those areas and focus on building detail in those areas while leaving some of the other areas less, less resolved. This way the viewer's eye would be drawn towards the way the light was falling across my face and the other details of the image wouldn't be competing for attention, but would instead be supporting that moment. Once I was happy with the highlights on my skin, I turned to adding more detail to the hair. Painting the hair is always one of my favorite parts of the portrait because while most of the portrait you're very constrained by proportions and making sure everything lines up just right, with the hair you have a lot more freedom and room for abstraction. So I decided to redefine some parts of the hair to make it stand out a little bit more, give it a little more shape, and also add a few highlights to really bring it out. And here I think it's important to be careful because oftentimes when I see highlights, I'm very tempted to add every highlight that I see. But I think if we do this, it can actually be really distracting and it can take away from the clarity of the image. Highlights are very beautiful, but they can distract from the overall design of the painting if there's too many of them. So with that in mind, I tried adding just a few highlights to the hair to give it a sense of glossiness without being too distracting. And here's the final result. While it's definitely far from a perfect portrait, I'm in the end really happy with how the colors and the concept came together. Let me know what you think of it in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please let me know in the comments below. And a huge shout out to all my supporters on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for making this channel happen. You guys are amazing and I really appreciate your support. And if you like my art, if you like my videos and you wanna help me make more, consider supporting me on Patreon. Check out the link below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.